Like, I'm so done with him. I'm just done. It's too much. I'm through. <laughs> What's good, mind speakers? If you click this video, you know exactly what we're getting into. We're getting into the new Beyonce and Jay-Z album, Everything Is Love. Now, just when we thought, just when we thought Beyonce and Jay-Z were about to go on the On The Run 2 tour and give us no new music, sell out the whole shit and give us no new music, because we've been begging Beyonce, Beyonce, where's the music? Where's the music? And she's pretty much just been like, shut up, bitch. You gonna dance to this old shit. You ready? One, two, three, four! Like, she just does, she does not care. So, randomly, after one of their shows out there in the UK, might have been London or some shit, I don't know, they decided to drop their album by announcing it at the end of the show. And the crowd lost their mind. And I think I would have been there too, like, oh shit, new music, oh! But then I thought, I would have been like, wait a second. So you mean to tell me that y'all done cooked up a whole new album and I done bought a $500 ticket to Crazy in Love when I want to buy the ticket to Ape Shit? You got me fucked up. I would have been pissed in hindsight. But it is what it is. The album is out. It is called Everything is Love. So let's get into it. Because I was actually taking a nap. Uh, naps for me actually last more than three hours. Don't judge me. I won't judge you. Thanks. So I roll over, check the timeline. I see a notification from Tidal. Everything is love. I have Instagram alerts for Beyonce and Beyonce only. And it says Beyonce. Beyonce, Beyonce, Beyonce. So I'm like, oh shit, it happened. So I don't even open Instagram. Ain't nobody got time for that. I swipe the title notification and everything is love is there. Before we get into each track and everything that's in the album, if you're looking for a Beyonce album, I don't know if this is exactly what you want. If you're looking for a Jay-Z album, you might be happy. And I know there are definitely some people that don't understand how that could possibly come about, how Jay-Z is kind of not in Beyonce's world, but Beyonce seems to be in Jay-Z's. But that's because Beyonce is a fan of Jay-Z's music. Beyonce obviously was not in a Beyonce album type of mood, and you could tell through the sound of this album. And I also think it hammered home the point that she gonna make y'all love that nigga. I know a lot of y'all can't stand Jay-Z. I done seen it all over social media, and you know Beyonce got ghost accounts on Instagram. She got a Twitter, she got a Tumblr, she got all that shit. She been watching y'all. She knows that y'all done talk shit about Jay-Z, and she really don't give a fuck because she loves that nigga and she said y'all gonna love that nigga too so it is what it is so the album starts off boom first track is summertime produced by cool and dre this is a vibe i see where she's going i'm like okay it starts off she's like let's make love in the summertime it's a slower song gives me like superpower vibes so i'm like all right this is getting ready to be some old stanky black cookout music right and i'm all right with that because lord knows i love that shit but i heard beyonce say i want you to come inside right now just so that way you know how i feel and i'm like we know, okay? I don't got enough children. I don't want to hear none of that, especially not from you. Like, Beyonce and Jay-Z with the TMI is starting to get a little bit TMI. Watermelon was a nice metaphor, okay? We heard blow. I don't want to hear no more about the freaky shit y'all do. I'm sorry. I get it. And y'all gonna have way more beautiful rich children and split up Blue Ivy's inheritance once again. But trust me, I, I can't. The first lyric that Jay-Z says is, I brought my sand to the beach. Now, I know a lot of people probably just let that go, but I caught that because that concept to me seems like he was in a relationship where he had everything. He had a family, he has a beautiful wife, he has love, but we already know the things that Jay-Z went through. And so he continues talking about all the stuff that he went through and how it relates to Beyonce even more in this album. And that's my thing I love about this album is they don't do interviews. So you have to listen to the albums to pretty much know how they feel about everything that's going on. And they did not hold back on this album. They just let it go. So when he said, I bought my sand to the beach, that's the first lyric in this album, basically saying, I don't know why I was trying to acquire everything you give me, pretty much. So summertime's a good way to start the album. But then I thought, I thought, I thought I knew what the album was gonna sound like. I was like, okay, we're getting part two on the run. You know what I mean? We're getting some grown vibes. And so I clicked the next track and it's ape shit. So I hear ape, 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 ape. One of the Migos, Quavo, Offset, Takeoff. I heard it's Offset, but at first I didn't know it was Offset. I probably thought it would be Quavo. So Beyonce starts going off. So she pretty much just stiff arms Cardi B and says, get out of here. I'm the new Miguel. Because Beyonce is just mumble rapping her ass off. But I'm gonna give it to you real. A lot of people are gassing Beyonce's lyrics a lot of the time. Because on most of this album, Beyonce is just giving us Timmy Turner. She's just like, giant snake, birthday cake, large fries, chocolate shake. It's just like whatever rhymes and she's giving it to us in his swag. But she ain't saying shit, dog. You gotta admit that to yourself. She had a good time. But a lot of this album lyrically belongs to Hope. But there's one part in Ape Shit. It's the first line where she says, give me my check, put some respect on my check, or pay me in equity, pay me in equity, watch me reverse out of debt. There's a lot of financial stunting in this album that reminds me that I have like $36.44 to my name. So I just want to thank you, Beyonce, for once reminding me again just how broke I 
I really am. Thank you so much. Hope also took aim at the NFL and said, I said no to the Super Bowl. You need me. I don't need you. Every night we're in the end zone. Tell the NFL we in stadiums too. And that is a power move because I also heard that the NFL has like tried to get Rihanna for this year's Super Bowl. Also heard that she said yes, but I hope she didn't say yes because they don't value black lives. They don't value black people, black perspective. You don't get black entertainment. So suck my dick. And that's basically what Hope said. But ape shit, I realized after I was done listening to the album and not realizing that there was a video for ape shit and not just a regular video. Beyonce and Jay-Z rented out the Louvre. The video just to me, and I know a lot of people, people who are like, oh, I don't like mainstream things and y'all think Beyonce, shut up. Okay, shut up. Yes, Beyonce is mainstream. She is the stream. Yes, Jay-Z is also that. Black people have been kept out of everything. Everything. And they have a bunch of black dancers. This black man getting his hair braided by this woman in front of the Mona Lisa on the cover. That is a statement. That is basically saying to me that we as black people have the ability to unlock the riches of the world that we once had. That's all that video meant to me is that it was a stunt. We about to be black and turn up in the middle of the Louvre. Ain't no place where we have to act like we gonna fit in. Hell no, we gonna be black as hell and then middle of the fucking loop. The next song is Boss. Now this is one of my early favorites because the beat is just like a harmony and then a simple bass line. Like it's very simple and I loved it. And Beyonce just came in straight with her harmonies and she hits a run at the end of it that just like makes like my spine convulse. Like Beyonce can Wow. People who say Beyonce can't sing, shut up. But then Jay-Z says, niggas getting jerked, that shit hurts, I take it personally. Niggas rather work with the man than to work with me. Just so they can pretend that they on my level, that shit is irking to me. Pride always goes before the fall, almost certainly. And that is directly at Drake. Because if you remember, when Tidal started up, Drake won't near it. Drake ended up signing with Apple, but he was also in negotiations with Spotify. And now that whole Drake and Apple music shit isn't exactly perfect. First of all, Drake has had enough, okay? <laughs> I think Drake... Has, doesn't want nothing with nobody until Scorpion comes out. But he's got a point because he doesn't say it from like, yo, you want to sign with them instead of working for me. He says with me. You know what I mean? Like, you can work with me. You don't have to be me. You can be you and work with me. And clearly he thinks that Drake would rather be him and try to compete with him than join forces with him against the greater evil. And so Jay-Z says, over here we measure success by how many people successful next to you. How we say you're broke is if everybody gets broke except for you. So if you're the only rich nigga in your circle, Jay-Z calls you broke. And that's another stunt because, I don't know, I kind of do still define success by like what you're able to do for the people around you. Like, if everybody can't eat, I'm not rich enough. That's how I feel. And then Beyonce comes in and throws in another stunt. My great great children already rich. That's a lot of brown children on your Forbes list. So I right, Beyonce, we get it, I right? I'm broke, thanks. The next track is Nice, produced by Pharrell. And the first thing you hear is him say, I can do anything. Yeah. You want to just be able to sing that and not even think about it, but have it get into your subconscious that you can do anything. And I just think that's a good thing for black people to hear. It's just a new message for your subconscious because we get a lot of subconscious messages that say we can't do much. And so this is just a new subconscious message that says I can do anything. And the Jay-Z verse I love is one of my favorite on the album because he pretty much says like, after all that I've done, no one has reached the heights that I've reached. I'm Jay-Z. I am aware that I am Jay-Z. How he still functions as a black man even though he's rich by the system. Yeah, fuck your subpoenas and your misdemeanors. Was too busy torn out all your arenas. My passport is tatted. It looked like it's active. I play on these planes. Y'all catch me in traffic. Y'all drag me in court for that shit. Y'all backwards. After all these years of drug trafficking, huh? Time to remind me I'm black again, huh? All this talking back, I'm too arrogant, huh? What would you do? You knew I wouldn't fail. I have no fear of anything. Do everything well. I have no fear of jail. I was born in the trap. I have no fear of death. We're all born to do that. So like, pretty much, he's like, fear doesn't exist because I've done everything. I can't lose, but, and if I did lose, I was born a loser, so now what? Like, that's the ultimate badass verse to me. Like, you really can't touch him no matter what you do. Even if you try to break him and throw him in jail, he's like, all right, watch me function. I do this. And Beyonce comes through with her best verse on the album, just like her biggest stunt, which I think a lot of people are reducing to one point, but I'm gonna make another. Patiently waiting for my demise, cause my sense can't be quantified. If I gave two fucks about streaming numbers, would've put Lemonade up on Spotify. Now, a lot of people are like, oh shit, she came with Spotify, da 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 da. If Beyonce did want a lot of her music to be bigger, she wouldn't be making a point with her music. Like, this album just went on Apple Music today, it will not be on Spotify. There's no way it will be on Spotify. But Jay-Z and Beyonce are making power moves with their music. And a lot of people love to say, oh well, Beyonce's the queen, but how when she don't charge? There are a lot of other ways that success and power can be monitored besides the Billboard Hot 100. That's actually 
the easy one. That's actually the most temporary marker of success. So I love that Beyonce attacked that because she knows she hears what people be saying and she's pretty much like, yo, hold my dick. You can't quantify my success. Next track is 713, which I love this song because it like marries two sounds, right? Because when I heard 713, I'm like, yo, we back in Brooklyn. This is hip hop. But then the song is called 713 and Beyonce is like talking her shit. Now she's like, yeah, still tipping it by Lolo's girl. I put it down for the 713 and we still got love for the street. Like she's going off. And so I'm like, this is literally marrying two sounds. Like Beyonce talking her Houston shit, but we back in Brooklyn for hope. So Jay-Z pretty much takes this opportunity to tell a story about how him and Beyonce first fell in love. They met somehow at the VMAs Cancun or whatever. And he basically says like, yo, everybody was pushing up on you. I just played the room. I'm not going to be that guy. I'm not going to be another one of them niggas that's running up to you trying to get your number and all that. But then it turns out that he had sat next to her on a plane randomly, I guess out of there, but then he didn't talk to her for another two years and she had had a boyfriend and so then she shut it down. But then eventually he got a hold of her and then they had a date at Nobu and he brought his friend. How you bring your friend on a date? Are there niggas who do this? If you do this, you need to leave a comment because how do you do that? How do you bring your friend on a, that's not a date no more. I, Okay, ho. But then he goes into the story about when him and Beyonce first spent those three days together in San Tropez, and when Beyonce had to leave after they had that fun on the yacht, and we all know Beyonce loves jumping off of the damn boat, which I don't know how she do that, but I mean, she's Beyonce, so there's your answer. And he says, I never told you, but I told a few people we wed. Me, I'm off in Rome, you going back home instead. My first time in my life, a nigga felt dead. You came back, I had to act like I was cool in my head. Thoughts of jumping the broom, a player never been swept. Even though this song is just stupid hard, and Beyonce is just going off, like I can see her doing that Mary J. Blige stomp to this song during concert Jay-Z is telling actually like a really cute story about how he fell in love with Beyonce and knew he was in love with her because he never wanted her to leave and so I think that's really cute but I mean the song dumb hard like I'm not gonna be thinking about that when I'm bumping this shit but it's actually really cute lyrically next up is friends which is I want to say it's sonically one of my favorites on the album but realistically there are no duds sonically actually I think nice might be my least favorite sonically but then again that's probably gonna change because it's like my favorite lyrically anyway here we go and this song has a <laughs> very pointed message and basically this is all about friendship how Jay-Z defines friendship now for those of you who don't know Jay-Z still has very close relationships with all of his niggas from the Marcy projects that he grew up with everybody that helped him build Rockefeller all them guys are still his niggas and pretty much they're all taken care of so he's going to that and saying this is how I define friendship you want to get into it let's get into it and then he leaves a specific note at the end you emotional when I say free the dogs I free them that's how Meek got his freedom Y'all niggas put on a t-shirt and heard you ain't never meet him. That's a direct shot at the Kardashians. Y'all remember when Kendall and Kylie got sued for them R.I.P. Biggie and Tupac t-shirts that they thought they was gonna sell at Paxson or some shit? And then he sends the shot that lets you know exactly who he's talking about. I ain't going to nobody nothing when me and my wife beefing. I don't care if the house on fire. I'm dying, nigga. I ain't leaving. Ty Ty take care of my kids after he done grieving. If y'all don't understand that, then maybe we ain't meant to be friends. Well, yay, you got your answer. Because Kanye, you know, was very candid during that interview with Charlamagne and basically said that he was upset that Jay and Beyonce didn't come to his wedding and he understands that they were, you know, having problems, but it doesn't matter. And Jay-Z pretty much said, no, yes, it does matter. Cause y'all ain't about to have us out here looking stupid. And we're not just having like a fight over the fact that I left the fork in the sink. This is about to be the end of our marriage. So you need to understand that. So I don't know what that means. I'm pretty sure like they're always gonna say, oh, we're brothers, you know what I mean? We're always gonna be brothers. Like that's what they always say, but Next is Heard About Us, produced by Boy Wanda. And this is like one of my favorite songs on the album, sonically. I love this sound. Reminds me of Prom by SZA, that whole 80s sound. I'm into it. I'm into it. I love that sound. Beyonce, I just wish she broke that Lil Yonce vert mumble rap shit. I don't want to hear Beyonce talk about Patex. Like, just sing to me. Sing something real. Come on, I'm begging for it. She gets to it on the last song of the album, but I wanted some of that on this song. But having a clip of Beyonce saying, if you don't know, now you know, nigga, will always be something that I do cherish. And also, she says, we smoke and we drink, do say to the face. Now, I just want to let you know that weed is a common theme in this album, and if you don't think that Beyonce is smoking weed, you're Dumb. Beyonce, we know, girl, and it's fine. You can smoke, you got your edibles. I don't know what she is doing, but we see Beyonce zonked at them goddamn NBA games, girl. We see her zone out. Everybody thinks Beyonce doesn't know what's going on. No, Beyonce is high as hell. Beyonce is on sensory overload. But Jay-Z says, Billie Jean in his prime for the thousandth time, the kid ain't mine. Online, they call me dad kiddingly. You're not supposed to take this dad thing literally. I guess he's going back to people saying that, Jay-Z, you are hiding a child. Let that boy come home. People have been saying that about, oh, saying that he had a child before Beyonce, he don't claim him. He's pretty much addressing that saying, I don't have no kids. It's Blue, Sir, and Rumi. Leave me alone. Next up is Black Effect, produced by Cool and Dre. One of the best songs on the album, one of the best Beyonce and Jay-Z collabs ever. Because the song starts off with the definition of love. Now, I don't know who's speaking. 
I probably should. Maybe somebody will figure out who's speaking. I don't know. But it's a woman who's talking about the definition of love and how there's definition of love for your partner, definition of love for others, definition of love for children. And they're all different, but they all come together with one meaning that is unconditional giving of self. And that doesn't always mean monetary. That also means your soul, like who you are, your time, everything. And so I think that is important. I think it's a definition that a lot of people need to understand. And I think Jay-Z put that in there because that's something that he needed to learn and learn through therapy. And Jay-Z says, I'm good on any MLK Boulevard. And Beyonce like, I'm good to what? Since the Khalif died, they've been coming at my neck. You can tell them Trayvon's coming next. That's about the Khalif broader story that Jay-Z did for BET that is now on Netflix that people had a problem with because he pretty much told the truth about why Khalif Browder should not have been able to sit in jail and rot until he killed himself off of doing nothing wrong. And he said he's doing the Trayvon documentary next and he's gonna pretty much expose the truth about that too and everybody can be mad. I love Black Effect. Black Effect is definitely in my top three. And last but not least, we have Love Happy, which is the best song on the album because it ties together the point that has been overarching this entire time, which is basically, we're in love, don't have to like it, but it is what it is. And so in the last song, Love Happy, in the lyrics, they say, happily in love, haters, please forgive me. I let my wife write the will, pray my children outlive me. I give my daughter some custom dresses so she gonna be Liddy. <laughs> I just love the way she says Liddy in that part. Bitches pieces by the time she hit the city. When you see Blue Ivy and Rumi stunting in their vintage I am Sasha Fierce Moo Glare in the middle of New York City someday, don't question it, cause she told you. And then they get into this exchange where he says, he went to Jared, I went to Charmaine and Parry. Yeah, you fucked up the first stone. We had to get remarried. And Jay-Z goes, chill, man. And she says, we keeping it real with these people, right? Lucky I ain't kill you when I met that And then he cuts her off. Which is another thing we didn't know. So whoever this Becky girl is, Beyonce knows who she is. And she actually met her. And they probably had like some weird therapy conversation. I don't know. Maybe Beyonce wanted to kill her. Maybe he had to hold her back. Maybe Ayanla did it. I don't know. But Beyonce actually sat face to face with that woman. A lot of people don't get how they were able to really heal. Like, they really went through it, clearly. She sat face to face with the girl. There's no stone unturned in whatever Jay-Z was doing. And obviously, that's why we saw the footage of them getting remarried on tour. And then he goes on to say, y'all know how I met her. We broke up, we got back together. To get her back, I had to sweat her. Y'all cut makeup with a bag, I had to change the weather. Move the family out west, but it's whatever. And so he pretty much says, it's not that she just took me back as I am. I had to change everything. And now we know why they left New York. And then Beyonce says, in a glass house, we still throwing stones, Hova Beezus, watch the throne. Now, for everybody who's ever critiqued me for calling Beyonce Beezus, I know Vera's done it. Vera, I know my best friend Vera's watching this video, V. What did I tell you? Beezus, that's right. I can call her Beezus now. Beyonce calls herself Beezus. It is what it is. Sorry, Jesus. There's also a Beezus. And then comes the chorus where she says, you did some things to me, but love is deeper than your pain. I believe you can change. The ups and downs were worth it. Long way to go, but we'll work it. We're flawed, but we're still perfect for each other. Sometimes I thought we'd never see the light. Went through hell, but heaven's on our side. This beach ain't always been no paradise, but nightmares only last one night happily in love. Which basically means Beyonce has unlocked a piece of forgiveness that I just don't know yet. And maybe it's because I don't know love like that yet. Maybe it's because I don't know maturity like that yet. God, please reach down and touch my heart the way you've touched Beyonce's. Because I just don't know if I'm there yet. But what I can say is Jay-Z obviously showed major changes. And he's talked about it on 444 and talked about it here. Basically, she didn't take me back being a fuck nigga. She took me back being a better version of my Myself, being the person that she deserves now he lives honestly and I hope he keeps that up because I mean if we were to catch Jay-Z out here that would be like that would just invalidate all this shit okay let's just not even go there let's just say we are happy for the Carters I can see that Beyonce had to have fun because Beyonce loves rapping Beyonce loves getting her mumble shit off and Jay-Z spoke about the things that he wanted to speak about and this is just good hip-hop music I know a lot of Beyonce fans a lot of the white ones specifically are not going to be happy with what this album is, but Beyonce content is done being for you. It probably hasn't been for them since I Am Sasha Fierce, to be honest, because even for was some blackity black ass music, but it is what it is. I think the album is dope. You let me know below how you think the album is. Do you like it? Do you not? What are your top three tracks? I'm going to go off the top of my head just how I feel. My top three tracks have to be Black Effect, Boss, and Love Happy if I had to choose off the top of my head, but those are the three I'm going to choose for now, but that doesn't mean it's going to stay that way forever. So you let me know what your top three are below. And as usual, if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. If not, suck a dick, and I'll be seeing you guys later. Deuce. First thing that people do when they see someone get shot, whether he's famous or not, they run up with their phones. There's a man that needs help, and you run up with your phone.